So I went to the dentist the other day, and if you know anything about me, you will know that when it comes to my teeth, I am fearful and irrational. Now I had to go to the dentist because my tooth hurt, but I did not want to see the dentist because I did not want to know the condition of my teeth. You know the whole ostrich syndrome. But whatever I thought the bad news was going to be, it ended up being a lot worse. So here's the backstory. About 10 years ago, I started to have some real teeth issues. It turns out I'm a teeth grinder at night, and the more stress I am under, the more I grind my teeth. And the dentist proposed that I spend about $300 to purchase a night guard in my teeth that I can comfortably wear at night to protect them. And my response was this. I am not spending $300 for a piece of plastic just to protect my teeth. Now fast forward 10 years later, I have and am about to spend over $10,000 on those same teeth. And that's not counting the price I paid in pain, stress, the time spent in recovery, going to specialists, and the dread I had to deal with. So if I could go back in time 10 years ago and talk to Mr. Naive Andrew, I would tell him, hey buddy, I know this is expensive, but you cannot afford not to get this night guard. Which then got me thinking, besides the night guard, by the way, highly recommend if you do grind your teeth at night, what else would you tell your younger self or anyone about a decade younger in which you would say, you might think this costs a lot, but you cannot afford not to get it. Now I have my top four, I would like to share it with you but in the comments below, I would love it if you share with us what you would tell your younger self. So here it goes. Number one, you cannot afford to not build trust with your spouse. As a pastor, we see many couples build romance, they build chemistry, they build emotional connection, they build common interests, they build children together. These are all great things and they are fun to build. But many times, the one thing they fail to build is trust. Trust in a relationship is like the foundation of a building. It's not showy. When people show off their house, they like to show off the foyer or the beautiful dining room, but no one says, hey, let me show you our beautiful foundation. But we all know how big and how tall the house you build on is dependent on the foundation. Now the reason trust is hard to build is because it takes sacrifice. It means dealing with conflict the correct way. It means you might have to change. It means you have to love the other person above yourself. But if you invest in trust now, make the sacrifice, I promise you won't regret it. You cannot afford to not have trust in your marriage. Number two, the second thing I would say that you cannot afford to not do is to pursue your children's heart. You know, I have young kids and many times they just keep talking and talking about things that are very important to them, but shall we say less important to me. The temptation is this, is to tune them out. I definitely have been guilty of that. Until one day my little girl was sharing her heart with me and I did the whole uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I was on my phone just doing uh-huh, tuning her out. She suddenly took my head in both her hands, made me face her and said, stop just saying uh-huh and listen to me. And she was four years old. See, our kids, even at a young age, knows if we are truly engaged with their hearts, if we truly care about what they care about, or if we're just putting up a show. Right now is the time to pursue their hearts, to listen to their crazy stories or their imaginations, or how about this, listen to their fears, listen to their frustrations or their pains. I am not saying to coddle them. I am saying to listen to them. There's a big difference here. Kids will respond much better to your coaching, to your correction, when they know that you have taken the time, you have made the sacrifice to connect with their hearts. Don't wait to connect with their hearts. As they get older, it may be too late. Now the third thing that I would say is to live within your means. Yes, by that I am talking about money. Despite stereotypes, I am really not that great at math. But even I can understand this. If I spend more money than I make, I am going to be in trouble. And you see, I have seen experience in life that if you let your wants, not your needs, but if you let your desires go wild, 
it will become uncontrollable and come back to devour you. You cannot make enough money to keep up with untamed desires. So instead, sacrifice, practice self-control, let God filter your desires and open your hearts to give and serve other people's need. Ten years later, when you look back, you will realize that you have truly stored up your treasures in heaven while living with true joy and satisfaction while you are on earth. Number four, the last thing you cannot afford not to sacrifice is the most important one. You cannot afford to not give your life to Jesus. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Of all the things I just listed, this is by far the hardest sacrifice. God knows the things that I hold closest to my heart, and He asks for them. Whether it might be the faith I have put into my own ability or talents, or my need to be in control, or depending on Him instead of money to be my security, God is always asking me to give Him my most precious. But here's the thing, myself, you, we cannot afford to not give it to Him. God is asking for these things because He knows the things that makes us the most comfortable, the most secure, the most independent will end up killing our hearts. So in His wisdom and His love for us, He asks us to surrender it to Him. While you may feel like the most damaging, most painful sacrifice, in return, He gives us Himself which is what we really need. Check out what Jesus said. Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up the cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever lose their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Friends, trusting and giving your life to Jesus Christ doesn't just have eternal implications, that we are safe from hell and we get to live with God in the brand new world. But they are very real implications for our lives here on earth today so that we can live life to the full. I know this is costly, but friends, you cannot afford to not give your life to Jesus. Hey, what about you? In the comments below, if you could talk to yourself from 10 years ago, what would you say to them? Frame it like this. You cannot afford not to blank. Hey, I look forward to learning more from all of you.